Setting up a NAT gateway allows resources on a private subnet to access things over the public internet while still remaining private. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a NAT gateway inside of a custom VPC. In a previous video, I set up a custom VPC with a public and a private subnet. And on the public subnet, I put an Nginx reverse proxy that would forward HTTP traffic to a node application that was sitting on a private subnet. And this app just connects to an S3 bucket so that I can see all of the files within my bucket and download them. But right now it's sitting on a private subnet and can't connect to anything. So it can't even connect to that S3 bucket. By attaching a NAT gateway to the VPC, I can allow resources on my private subnet to access anything over the internet, but it will still remain private. And that's because of network address translation. So a NAT gateway will sit on the public subnet and it will be able to connect to the public internet and it will be assigned a single public IP address. Then anything on a private subnet with a private IP address can get the NAT gateway to make a request to the public internet on its behalf. So we're not actually connecting our private infrastructure directly to the public internet, we're instead using this NAT gateway as a middleman to do all of that for us. And this is probably how your home router works. Right now I have a laptop, an iPhone, an iPad, a Raspberry Pi, a baby monitor, all connected to my router in my house and they're all on a private network together, but they can all connect to the public internet through my router. I have a single IP address for my home that can connect to the public internet, make requests on behalf of my laptop and then deliver responses back to the device on the network that made the request. This means that you or anyone else can't actually connect to my laptop directly over the internet. It's hidden and it's private, but I can still access things publicly. So I set all of this up in my last video. I have my reverse proxy on the public subnet that's forwarding traffic to my application instance on the private subnet. And right now that works, I can visit my basic application. But when I click this link to view files, it's trying to connect to an S3 bucket and it's completely private. It can't get through to anything right now. So I'm gonna create a NAT gateway so that this thing can connect. So if we go into the VPC console, we can scroll down to NAT gateway, wherever it is, there it is. And I currently don't have any NAT gateway. So I'm just gonna go and create one in the top right here. This is for my VPC that I called my files app VPC because I specifically want to use this VPC just for this app. Uh, so I'm going to call this my files app uh, NAT gateway. And then we have to put this on a subnet. A NAT gateway must go on a public subnet. So you have to already have an internet gateway attached to a subnet to be able to do this. And I covered that in my last video. So I'm going to select my public subnet here uh, and I'm going to leave this connectivity type as public select an IP address, I'm gonna allocate a new elastic IP address, which means I'll have to delete this if I delete my NAT gateway. And then I'm just gonna create that NAT gateway. So now that I have this created, its state is pending, but it will be set up soon. The next thing I have to do is go to my private subnet, and more importantly, I have to go to my private subnet's route table. Because in the same way we forwarded traffic on the public subnet to the internet gateway, on a private subnet, we're gonna forward traffic to the NAT gateway. So I'm gonna click on the route table ID here. On the routes tab, I'm gonna edit the routes and add a new one. So by default, we have this private route that allows private networking within the VPC. But add a new route, so any IP address range that isn't already covered, we're going to forward to the NAT gateway in this case. And this is the NAT gateway that I just created. So I'm gonna save these changes and that should be all I need to do. So if I go back to my application, this was unable to connect to anything before because it couldn't make any requests out to the public internet. But now if I refresh the page, so now my application can connect to the S3 bucket and here are the files I have in the bucket here. I can see they exist right there. And I've set it up so if I click one of these, I'll actually get to see what it is. So this is all working. My instance on my private subnet can now connect to other things outside of the VPC. And with the way I've set up the NAT gateway, I can now connect to anything. Anything over the public internet, I can connect to from this private subnet. But that might not be exactly what I want. In this case, I'm really only connecting to an S3 bucket, which is another service within AWS and if that's the case if you're just connecting to something else within AWS you can set up other things within the VPC to create a secure private connection just to that service rather than opening up a NAT gateway like this and I'm going to look at those alternatives in my next video one more thing that I should mention is that NAT gateways are a little bit expensive to run. I think they're around $30 a month just to have the NAT gateway set up. And then you also have to pay for bandwidth charges. So if you're not using this, uh, you should delete your NAT gateway. 
uh, remove the entry from the route table. Let's see if I can find this first try. There we go. Edit the route, delete that and go back to uh, let's see VPC because an elastic IP was assigned to that NAT gateway. We should also delete the elastic IP, which is right there. Actions disassociate. I actually need to wait for my NAT gateway to be completely deleted before I can release this IP address, but make sure you tear all that down because it can be a little bit expensive.